our New Testament reading for today. We hear the words of Jesus, Matthew 13, verses 44 through 46. Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all that he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Friends, these are God's good words. May he add his blessings upon them. I had, uh, had someone text me last night, as uh, often it's not really that rare, it's but Saturday night before church, or especially when something's going on. Again, uh, maybe tomorrow you ought to, I get all kinds of suggestions and things, and one of them was, if you do such and such in such a way, I haven't been there for a while, but I'll see you tomorrow. Let me know. They're not here today. So... Um, <laughs> But as I, as I uh, as, uh, you know, again, trying to think about the, the circumstances that we find ourselves in as a country and as a people, one of the things that I'm certain of is the more things change, the more things stay the same. I, I, I like to, the good old days, somebody once said that the good old days, if you ask somebody when the best time in their life was, more often than not, they'll go back to when they were 10 years old. And, uh, and they will think about all the good things, the good friends, the good fun, no responsibilities, no trouble, and uh, they will, will end up uh, going back, going back to, uh, to, that, to that period of time. Well, at, at 10 years old, it was, I, I was just coming out, it was just coming out of the 60s, and it really was probably one of the best times of my life. We had, we had friends, we would play all kind of games in the cul-de-sacs. I loved cul-de-sacs back then. We live in one now, I'm not, I don't like it quite as much because around firework times, everybody blows up their fireworks in my cul-de-sac. And uh, we, pick up, we pick up pieces of fireworks for the next two weeks. And every time Linda comes in with the dog, for some reason I just don't see him. But when she comes in, she's holding another handful of, of fire. I think she's going to other people's yards at this point and uh, cleaning up our neighborhood one yard at a time. And so, um, but I remember those times so wonderfully and yet, when I, when I think about uh, the times that were difficult for our country, I didn't experience it in the same way. But I, uh, uh, several times in the years when I, we've talked about whether it's COVID or a recession or something going on, and I've stopped by to see Gene and Buster, and Buster will remind me, he said, you know, when, when the 60s were coming along, uh, I was afraid, many of us were afraid, our country was just, we, we hear this, this term existential threat and the world's falling apart and democracy could be done for. Uh, but this is not the first time that these kind of things uh, come up in history. And as, as Buster reminds me, uh, there were multiple assassinations in the 60s. There were, there were college campuses that were burning down and, and there were people rioting. The young people of the 60s rose up and uh, they were being arrested and beaten, and all sorts of things were happening in their country, in our country. I was oblivious. I was just living, living a good life in Portsmouth, Virginia, in my little cul-de-sac. Um, as I've told you before, and this probably explains a lot, uh, not only would we go out in the, in the day and our parents would say, just go on out, come back when the lights come on, somewhere around then, um, but we had a lot of mosquitoes in, in, in Portsmouth, Virginia back then, and for some good reason, we thought that when the mosquito truck came by, it was a good thing to do, was to run through the fog. And um, so I'm still paying for it. I don't know how I'm paying for it, but I, Linda, Linda says at night, it's either that, that or the eight tracks at night when I'm sleeping, I, I'm constantly going. And if you've ever listened to an, an eight track, it's about on that, that rhythm, you know, da 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 flip it, and that's, that's where I am there. Uh, so that was, that was my childhood, and, but it, it, it doesn't just start in the 60s. As I, I, I've been reading, it says uh, negative campaigning in America uh, was, was started by two lifelong friends, one, one uh, article says, by John Adams and Thomas Jefferson. They were really good friends, and they made it through founding a country together, uh, but then all things fell apart, and they started slinging mud at each other and saying all kind of bad things. Uh, I don't like your wife, she's ugly, I don't like your kids, you know, I'm not sure if they're even your kids, and they had all these articles that were just horrible. And back then, when the early, early politics, 
up through the 1800s and they, when they ran out of politicians for this reason, the way that they would often settle political differences was by dueling. So they were, there's some famous duels from some names that you would probably recognize and, and uh, they would just say, you said something bad about me, take it back. I will not take it back. Now when, when I was coming along, we'd throw rocks at each other if we didn't take it back. They would say, all right, we'll meet you at such and such. You bring a gun, I bring a gun. And as you can imagine, that's one way to take care of a lot of politicians. You know, over a while, um, they start to just disappear. And then uh, they repopulated. And so that's why we have the, this is my view on history. Uh, we took care of all the bad ones, and, um, and then they just sort of came back. And so uh, what we saw last night, is, it's not unusual. It's just something I, I tell you, to be honest with you, um, I'm surprised it didn't happen before on both sides. I'm surprised any, any, any politician can make it through a, a political term because not only is, is from the very beginning it becomes something that's not about the policies, it becomes about the personalities and they just spend most of their time saying so many bad things and then when something does, it's all because you said bad things. And then over here it happens on this side and it's all because you... you you made it happen, and you caused it to happen. Friends, we live in a world where people are violent. They don't need suggestions to be mean, to be angry, to, to go out and kill people. They're going to do it. We live in a world where people are sinful and where people kill each other. That's terrible. And then that's sort of a downer today. I felt like wearing a downer shirt today. I didn't feel like wearing a, a, a nice tropical shirt today. So things, things have not really changed. We certainly need prayer and um, one of the requests was that we pray for healing for our land, and certainly we need to pray for healing for our land, but I think it starts with healing in our hearts. Healing in how we, you and me, treat our neighbor, how we treat our, our friends on Facebook, how we treat our brother or sister who's a, a Democrat or Republican and we're the other. It starts with our, our neighborhoods where we are the ones that model for our younger people how to get along and disagree. And hopefully that changes our neighborhood. That's all we can hope for. We can't change our country. Sometimes when people ask me to pray for healing our land, one of the things, I, I, this is another struggle I have with prayer, I find myself doing this quite a bit. Lord, bless this food to the nourishment of my body as I sit there with a Five Guys big, big burger and fries and an all-you-can-drink soda. I'm asking God to do magic. Uh, not a, a, a miracle. When we ask God to heal our land and, and, and so many of our people are not coming to church or coming to Christ or, or deepening their own faith, then we're asking God to do something that's just not rational. It's not even a miracle. It's just something that's just out there. And I think we, we do need to pray for our leaders. We do need to pray for our countries. But we also need to pray, God, how can I start something? How can I? There was an old Girl Scout song, It Only Takes a Spark to Get a Fire Going. I played that song and liked it till I realized it was a Girl Scout song, and then I had to quit singing it. Y'all remember that? Any Girl Scout? It only takes a spark to get a God fire going, going. And that's all I know. That's all I know. Uh, so the, the things, that's my political, anti political rant today. Uh, that the more things change, the more they stay the same. We certainly need God. Uh, we need to come to him on our knees daily. And we need to, to just, just, uh, just ask him for uh, a change of, of, of the spirit moving in our country. I, I certainly agree on that. But it doesn't only, things don't only change there. And I'm going to kind of segue back into my sermon this morning. If you saw where I started on my, on my notes, you'd go, wow, that was a pretty cool little segue there. Uh, maybe today not so much. But not only do we stay the same in the way the world was and how we treat each other, but the things that we seek, which I think adds to part of the problem. We are a, a group, a, a nation, a people who, who seek treasures. And, and it's sort of like that old country song is uh, looking for love in all the wrong places. I'm not going to sing that one for you this morning, but we, it's, a, it's another good song from my childhood. This one is we're looking for treasures in all the wrong places. We keep looking for things. It starts when we're young. Easter egg hunts. Did you ever do Easter egg hunt? 
Yeah, you did. You did. He was, I bet he was one of the best, fastest Easter egg hunters there ever was in the, in the land of Easter egg hunt, hunters. There are kids, there are certain ones that they run, and, and as soon as the, the t- clock starts ticking, they've got 30 Easter eggs. Honey. You were one of those guys. We got other ones who pick up one and go, Okay, that's enough. I'm good. And they stand over there, and, and the parents are going, Go get some more Easter eggs. They're out there. We, scavenger hunts. I love scavenger hunts. Uh, um, as long as I don't have to go too far to find them, and it's not too hard. But some, that's something that people sort of inherently do. Uh, yard sales, we go looking for. Again, that's, that's almost up there with Lord bless this food. Uh, you, you, I'm, I'm going to go yard sailing and find some real treasures, some things that are absolutely awesome. I, I was driving. I hadn't been up, I guess, I don't know if it's in June, but if you just keep on 41 past Cartersville, and uh, I guess for the Saturdays in June, they, they just for like miles of yard sales out there. And they got all kind of junk that's, you know, come get your treasure. This is wonderful. And cars pulling off on top of each other, people jumping out of the cars. It's, uh, it's entertaining. And, and, and uh, there are shows about storage units, old, uh, people's old storage units that they didn't finish, and they go and find something that's worthwhile. So y'all over there going, yeah, we've done that. Yeah, that's a good show. I've seen that. Done there, been there. Antique Road Show. You know, there's some good things there. It's entertaining, but it's not life-giving. It's not really what we were, we were called to do. It's something that we are, we are prone to do, but it's not something God really wants us to do. I, I observe human behavior. I'm an, I'm an observationist. There you go. As people ask me what I do, I like to observe people. I see people that are searching for all kinds of things like fame and fortune, approval, finances, all kinds of things that, that, the, that they want, and then they find it, and they still find out, man, there, there's something in here. There was another, I'm, I'm getting on my, my song people today, uh, they're don- the Donut Man. You ever heard of the Donut Man? He song, sang a song about there's, a hole, there's a, uh, something about a hole in the middle of a donut. It's like the hole in the middle of our heart. And the only thing that we can find that will fi- finish and fill that place in our heart, fill the emptiness that we really want and need to be filled, is Jesus. And, and we spend all of our time looking for that love in all the wrong places. Jesus teaches on on treasure hunts today in in Matthew chapter 13. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a heat field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and with his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. God created us to be people who seek. But most importantly, he created us to be people who seek him and to love him, and not part-time, not occasionally, not once in a while, but he created us to be all in. Jesus wanted us to be absolutely all in and following him. I, I, you know, I've mentioned this before. I, I've joined um, quite a few gyms in, the, in my day. Um, I've stuck with one or two for almost a year, sometime in there. Um, but my, my tendency is to go for a while, and then I just end up not going for a longer time. And then eventually I think, okay, I need to go back. I buy some new shoes. I see some shoes I like. I get some new shorts, a workout top. I'm really ready to go. And then I go for a little while. You know, I found out after all these years, you can't exercise for 15 minutes a month and expect to be healthy. (laughs) Lord, bless my exercise. Bless my food. Bless my search for all these things. And yet I want to keep doing what I'm doing. I don't want to get all in. I want to be partly in. I'll settle for 75% spiritually awake. It doesn't work that way. You can't say, all right, God, I tell you what, I'll follow you 64%. That sounds like I would be pretty content then. My neighbors won't call me religious fanatic. I can be happy. I can do some fun things. I, I can still live in this world. 64%. 68 percent don't ask me for 70 percent because we're going to start having troubles jesus says in 40 verse 45 again the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls when he found one of great value he went away and sold everything he had all those other things that didn't make him happy that really weren't his riches and he bought it 
We're called to seek and worship God. Jesus says also in Matthew 6, 33, seek not second, not third, not fourth, not fifth, not somewhere down the line. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything's going to be okay. Seek first, that's my translation. That's the bride translation there. Seek first the kingdom of God. You're going to have a meaningful life. You're going to be fulfilled. You're going to be peaceful. You're at peace no matter what your circumstances. Get all in, and I'm all in with you. Uh, the scripture tells us that if we'll get close to God, he'll get close to us. He's right here with us, with those of us who believe, but I think sometimes we kind of push God off to the side where he, he says, well, I'm going to see how they're going to do this time. And just like every other time, the more things change, the more things stay the same. We end up going right back to where we want. Uh, Jesus wants us to, to follow him totally, not just partly. Jesus challenged his, his followers, even from the earliest disciples. He said, drop your nets, leave your job, come and follow me. Not 33%, not 65%. I want you to drop everything you're doing, everything you've got, and come and follow me. Uh, when I started uh, being a pastor in church, it seemed like, um, that, not that it was idyllic, it surely wasn't. We were having a lot of these discussions back then. But there were, there were it, it, it got intense for us for his relationship with us to be in the center of all we do. This may be our recreation, this may be our work, this may be our family, all of these things along the way, but he intends for us to be right in the middle, and these other things are added to it. What has happened over the years is we've made all these things priorities, and God's over here. He's just some, somewhere a part of what we're doing, but he's not really, not really in the middle of our, what we're doing. He challenged the rich young ruler, Jesus did, and the rich young ruler, he said, you've done all these good things. Now, I only have one more thing to ask. I'm sure he was all ears. He said, yes, Lord, what, can I, what else can I do? I've done all these things. You said I'm a pretty good guy. What, what else can I do? He said, I want you to sell everything you have and come and follow me. And, and what, did, what did the rich young ruler do? He walked away sad because he couldn't make that commitment to do what Jesus was asking him to do all in god wants us to be all in for him and all in for others when asked what the most important rules were in the bible he said i want you to love god with all your heart soul mind and strength again not some of your heart soul mind and strength all your heart soul mind and strength and he said and i want you to love others as yourself you know i think most of us do take care of ourselves if some of us say i've heard before somebody will say Oh, but I just don't love myself very much, so what do I do? And I want to ask them, I heard the preacher say one time, somebody said that to him, and he said to them, well, do you still feed, feed yourself? Well, yes. Well, how about clothes? Do you still put clothes on? Looks like you do most of the time. Yes, I do. Do you still like living in a house? Yes, I do. We'll start there. Make sure other people can have those things as well and love them enough to help make their basic needs and, and, and then come back to me. If God wanted what so much that he loved the world, we're told in John 3, 16, he said he loved so much. First of all, this is important for us to remember. God is all in in loving you. He's all in to the degree that he did what? He sent his only son to die for you and to give his life for you. I think we're called to find the treasures not only in, in the world around us, but the treasure in each day. Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. I just, last night when I sat down after all this stuff was going on and I pulled up my social media, I'm like, now I know why I haven't been on it all the time. We are a terrible people. Our country is in a big trouble. People absolutely hate each other all day long on social media. I am just not sure if there isn't just warehouse after warehouse after warehouse uh, of demons and all kinds of things just sitting around going, oh, watch this, I'll make this one mad. Oh, watch this. I'm like, you got anything good? I don't think they even need to, the, 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 the spiritual the demons don't even need to come to us anymore. 
They can sit somewhere else and just plant all these little seeds in our ears, in our hearts, and we're going to bite because that's who we are. Think about such things, the good things. Whatever you've learned or received from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And what I've seen is Jesus is all in for you. He's all in for me. And I want to be all in for him. I'm not all the time. And that's okay. We make mistakes. We, but if we don't even try, we don't even make that a, a goal. If we're going to settle for 63%, 45%, then don't ask him to say, Lord, transform me. Because all you've asked is just to get by. And God doesn't want us to get by. He wants us to get ahead in him. So this morning, I, I pray for us all. I pray for our country. But let's start where we are in our families, at our work. Try to make a difference there. I'll end with this story. I know I, it's not my story. I love this story, but it's an old story. I haven't, I haven't told it in a long time. And it's, it's a story about a, an old man at a beach on a, on a morning. And uh, he's walking along and, and he's seeing all these starfish that have been washed up. And, you know, if they stay there too long, they kind of dry up and they die. You've heard this story, but it's good here, worth hearing again. And so he goes and he picks up a starfish and he just throws it in the water. Walks along, says another one, throws it in the water. After a while, he's thrown 10, 15 of these things into the water. Somebody comes to him and says, listen, old man. I, I, you know, people talk to me like this way, that way, this now. So I'm, listen, old man. Don't, shh, more respect. You're not going to, you can't save all. There's hundreds of these starfish on the, on the, on the, on the sand. And, and, and you can't help all these starfish. Old man picked up another one, threw another one. He said, old man, are you, are you hard of hearing? He said, no. I, he said, you can't help everybody. Picked, up, picked one. He said, well, I helped this one. Picked up another one. said, help that one. And if we all picked up a few starfish, a few words of kindness, made a little difference, maybe, maybe we make a difference. I, I'm a little bit on the um, skeptical side today. But I do have hope in Christ that, that the world is, is uh, God's not finished with us yet. So let's keep trying. Let's keep hoping and keep believing in him, uh, even if we find ourselves a hard time believing in each other. Let's pray. God, thank you for your, this day. God, thank you for the opportunity we have out there in the world. Help us not to go out into the world without our armor on, reading scripture and sword of the Lord, the, the word. Help us to go out surrounded in prayer. Help us to fill ourselves up with worship. God, help us to make a difference. The next time we, we start to look at our, our neighbor across whatever political aisle or, or God help as an enemy or someone we have nothing in common with, help us to remember that you love them too. That they are special, unique. And God, help us to, to, to be loving and caring in this world. I keep hearing, but that's the way it's done. You've got to be mean. You've got to throw rocks. You've got to have duels. You can't get ahead. You're weak if you do that. But Jesus, that's what I saw the way you live. I'll take my chances following you. In Jesus' name. In our scripture this morning, I heard the phrase, I am poor and needy, I am devoted. And the, the two things I thought about when I read that is, there's something that the world gives me, right? Like, I am poor, I am needy. Those are the circumstances the world puts on me, but then there's, I am devoted, and that's what I choose to be, and that's what I choose to do. Um, and I think that's a very important distinction, is we get handed things, and we get to choose what we do with them. Um, and so as we walk in a struggle as a nation, as we walk in a struggle as an individual person, as we walk in a struggle as a family, whoever it might be, choose your circumstance well. Choose how you handle it with grace um, and know that every single thing that you are choosing to do with it has been given to you. And hopefully the way you handle it, God has already given you all the tools you need.
Um, so we're going to stand and praise and sing him. Uh, thank him for all the things that he has given us. morning we want to pray for Barbara Key's grandson Cameron who's in the hospital um, he had, had had cancer and had, had a, was in recovery and uh, it had come back it's come back so pray for him they're having some uh, his, his wife has a new job and doesn't have enough time off in that new job to be with him as much as she needs to so pray that that gets worked out as well and uh, there has been a um, uh, GoFundMe page. Jean set that up, I think, and uh, you can talk to them about if you're interested in helping out, uh, any questions about that. But, but most of all, pray for him. Pray for their family. Pray for Barbara, her grandson. So it's always hard to see people you know, but especially kids that, that are struggling, no matter how old they are. I want to pray for Mickey Collier. He was in the hospital for a few days, and I, I believe he's out and home and hopefully in, in recovering. So Pray gain, gains his health and, and strength back. I, I want to praise God for a successful youth trip. And uh, thank you guys for not making them call me in the middle of the night. I appreciate that very much. You're, you, know, you're, you guys are awesome. You really are. Um, I've had to be called in the middle of the night before. I've had to. Uh, one time it was my own son. And, uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, there have been times when I've had to go pick up a, 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 a one or two. And believe it or not, I was a youth pastor once. And. I, I understand some of these stories. Uh, 
I was telling Ashley this morning, I had, had one young man, he was, a, he, he, yeah, he, he sort of kind of pulled a knife on me one time, and, uh, uh, but he didn't use it, so it was good, and uh, he wanted to go on a youth trip, and uh, he was a, a really bad smoker, and uh, I said, you know, you can't be smoking around these young kids, he said, oh, okay, I won't, I said, if you get caught, man, you're going home, and he said, oh, no, I can quit for the weekend, and first night, we're at the big gathering and of course I'm sitting around looking around I had been a juvenile delinquent myself so I know what to look for and uh, he he, uh, he got up and he kind of snuck out and he, he like nobody saw me he's grinning he's out that he's out there and uh, at some point uh, I showed up and he's out there just smoking away I said man I, I really hate that I'm gonna have to call your parents and send you home no you I, I said you said you weren't smoking he said i thought you meant i wasn't supposed to get caught smoking <laughs> thank you guys back there i appreciate it very much uh we we again we want to pray for uh that, that things didn't turn out any worse than they did last night but just think of all a lot of people that were traumatized last night and that this is not the first time these kind of things happen and uh, it sticks with you for a long time so Pray for those, uh, most of those people that were out there in the audience and that are, that are struggling today and just having some str- troubles there. Uh, pray that I'm uh, thankful that, uh, that, that nobody, that Trump was not hurt. And um, I, again, I, on that other side, just to be fair and equal and all those things. Pray for our pres- current president today, uh, that God be with him and help him in his health and uh, the strength to to be a good president, I want all of them to succeed. You know, if they, you know, to, to, to pray that somebody who's a, a, a political person fails is like praying that I, I want, I want my, my paycheck to go down and I, want, I don't want the good things to happen to me. You know, they, it's trickled down no matter how you think about it. It's coming to us sooner or later if they don't do a good job. So pray for all of them. And uh, let's go before God and, and lift up our hearts in prayer. God, I lift up all these people today. God, I make the terrible mistake so many times of saying, God, be with me as if you aren't with me. And you are with me every day, everywhere. You are with us no matter what's going on. Thank you, God, for being. You're already here. You are with me. If I'm going somewhere today and it's a difficult conversation or somewhere... God, thank you that you're, you are with me as I enter that conversation. And Lord, help us to, to just seek you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We come to you in a moment of prayer and quiet. Lord, hear our prayers now. God, we, uh, we ask this morning that uh, your blessings on our continued blessings on our, our Kenya participants, those who are over there and, and doing your work over there as we seek to do our, your work here. I pray for Myra today. She's having a little problem breathing and had to, had to step out of an, uh, one of her events and uh, pray that she would be healthy. Uh, thank you that a- Andy was having some problems with his kidney stones and that he's okay, that he's, he's doing better and uh, I just pray that they stay healthy and come home safe when, when the time is the time for them to be back. And, and God, as we, as we leave here today, help us to be your light in the world that's dark, uh, to be your love in a world that's filled with hate, to bring peace uh, into these places where people are so distressed and, and so anxious. God, sometimes we don't feel like we can do it, and we can on our own. But with your Holy Spirit in us, your promises before us, uh, your love surrounding us, God, we certainly can do what you've called us to do. We seek your will both today and always. To that, that end, we pray that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for being here today. We do have our offering plates in the back, and thank you for your continued faithfulness in supporting our church and the kingdom of God as you, uh, as you leave giving as the Lord has led you to give, please be in prayer about that. God sometimes has different ideas than we do about how much and when and where and all those things, and it's, I think it's probably a good idea to, to seek him and to listen when those times come. And as you leave today, just remember, if you feel led to stay and, and pray in a, for a, a, a few moments, please do. We'd love to have you stick around, and uh, I'll, I'll, since I made the suggestion, if you need to, we'll ask everybody to kind of Quietly go converse outside, and we'll shut the doors if, you need, if we need to. And uh, I'll, I'll stick around and uh, make sure everything's locked up if needed. So may God bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, be and abide with you all, both now and forevermore. Remember, God loves you, and I do too. Go in peace.